This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. We'll be talking about BART and if riders really do notice a difference. We hopped on a BART train. We follow the commuter. We'll have that story in just a minute. But first, we're talking about San Jose City Council and their approved plans just a few hours ago to open a new safe parking site. It is expected to be the largest city sanctioned RV park, and it's part of a bigger plan to help the homeless while the city comes up with a plan for more permanent housing. So the site is about a mile from the Berryessa BART station. But as Devin Feely tells, as some neighbors say the city needs to find a new spot. Behind me is what is left of what was just a short time ago one of the largest homeless encampments in the city of San Jose, near the San Jose airport. And you could perhaps understand how someone who would drive past or through this area and see what looks like disorder or chaos and say, I don't want that in my neighborhood. But the mayor says the people living here are deserving of help. And his promise to neighbors is that a managed city sanctioned encampment isn't going to look like this. Brooks Buncher is one of an estimated 400 homeless men and women living in their cars or RVs on the streets of San Jose. There are plenty of people out here just like me who are willing and capable to work, willing to, to be clean, willing to do things that they need to to help themselves. Brooks currently lives and sleeps in the backseat of his SUV, works odd jobs, and earns just enough to eke out a meager existence on the margins of regular society. He says he would jump at the chance to join a safe parking program. Not everybody is out here because they want to be, not everybody is out here because they have had a better option and chose not to. A lot of us are out here simply because we need a chance to be able to be independent. The San Jose City Council voted to open a safe parking program in the city's Berryessa neighborhood. They'd pay roughly $18 million over the next 10 years to house people living in their RVs and cars. As the mother of two kids, two young kids, this is not acceptable. Christine Lee lives near the proposed encampment. She's concerned about who may end up living there and worries about the safety of her children and others nearby. If like all the neighborhoods are like opposing plans like this, then we should find a place like further away from the neighbors. The city just want to get rid of the eyesores of the other businesses on maybe Montego Expressways and other places, but putting them together out of the street and then they consider the, the job done. Mayor Matt Mahan says there are currently thousands of homeless men and women living on the street in San Jose. This program, in contrast, he says, would offer them order and opportunity, structure, and services. The question is, do you want someone to be living in a tent or RV that's completely unmanaged, without security, without services in your neighborhood? Or would you like them to be in a site that has security and services and gives them the opportunity to turn their lives around? Brooke says he'd like the chance to prove that he could be a good neighbor. I fully think that it's possible to do it without all of this chaos, but it will take proper management and it will take probably at least a couple people on site. Who the mayor says that there is often opposition from neighbors to plans like this at the outset, and the onus is on the city to prove that they can do an effective job in managing these communities. And Devin tells us there is still no word on one that RV site on Berryessa will open. All right, some water customers in San Jose will see an increase on their bills starting next month. This after a vote to raise the rates from the San Jose City Council. This is specifically for San Jose municipal water customers. Those customers should expect to see a 14% increase. That works out to be about $16 a month. That hike comes despite our wet year. We even saw some rare June showers today. In fact, this was the scene in San Rafael earlier this afternoon. Steady rain, but nothing too intense. And the rain is now cleared, but temps are still a little bit on the cooler side. So Paul Hagan's going to fill us in. We did have that pop-up shower, you were saying. <laughs> yeah, widespread showers this morning kind of faded out this afternoon. Mm -hmm. There's one shower left at the moment in Napa County, and that's about it. The cooler temperatures are going to stick around for a okay. while. Let's take a look outside right now in San Jose. Some ominous looking clouds, but they are not dropping any additional shower activity onto the amount that already leads the pack. San Jose picked up almost one tenth of an inch of rain. Everybody else less than that, barely more than a trace at SFO and in Livermore. But any measurable rainfall in June is notable. Our average rain is next to zero. We're going to be seeing a few showers still trying to keep going as we head through the next couple of hours. You can see that activity right now in Napa County. Looks impressive, but these showers are climbing right over the spine of the highest elevations of eastern Napa County. As they go downslope, they're likely to look much less impressive as they approach St. Helena, Napa. But 
but a few sprinkles and brief showers could add up to the modest amount, add to the modest amounts we've seen already. No thunderstorms in our neck of the woods. All that activity stayed in the High Sierra, the Central Valley, and Northern California. Futurecast shows everything quieting down. Over the next couple hours, we'll be back to our mixture of low cloud cover and fog to start the day on Wednesday, but that'll give way to a mix of clouds and sunshine during the afternoon. The cool weather, though, as I mentioned, not going to shift a whole lot as we head through the rest of this week. We'll look ahead to the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Paul, thank you. All right, well, it is a huge milestone in Caltrain's efforts to shift its trains from diesel to an all electric system. And today, one of the new trains was finally connected to the overhead electric wires and tested for the first time. For now, it's only running in Caltrain's drill yard. And over the next two weekends, regular train service will be suspended between San Francisco. And Millbrae, so construction crews can put up more poles and wires and do more testing. So, when can you expect to ride on one of these electric trains? Well, not until fall of next year. But Caltrain, along with Muni and BART, could have a bleak future. They've warned that they could run right off of a fiscal cliff without more public funding. The current state budget proposal does not include any money for public transit. State lawmakers have until June 15th to make revisions, but with the state's billions of dollars in the red, adding expenditures may be quite a tough sell. Some transit advocates even held a mock funeral in San Francisco and Oakland over the weekend. They carried a coffin with a BART train to put pressure on lawmakers to save the system. So take a look at this. This is a graph from BART. So the blue bars, they represent where ridership was pre-pandemic. Around 400,000 riders took BART any given weekday. All right, so there you go. The orange, that represents ridership this year, not even close to where it was before. And according to a recent survey by the Bay Area Council, 45% of riders said safety concerns and cleanliness are among the main things that keep from riding BART, that keep them from riding BART. And BART police have put a new focus on safety because of this, and the agency says their efforts are paying off. Okay, well, do riders really notice a difference? Our Max Darrell had the task of riding along and hearing from a commuter. On a busy afternoon at the Embarcadero BART station, every few minutes, people and trains come and go. Priscilla Barrera is heading home on the yellow line to Antioch. It's about an hour ride. She commutes to and from the city on BART twice a week. It's not as scary as what people make it out to be. She's witnessed two of what she described as encounters, but... Overall, yes, I feel safe. On this line, I do. For her, that's been the case for a while. But for many who ride BART, that isn't the case. And BART police are trying to change that. Interim Chief of Police Kevin Franklin. Every single day, I, I'm putting out more police officers and more unarmed civilian personnel than ever before to be visible out in the system, riding trains, focusing on the core areas of the system, and being visible on trains and in stations. That has included the addition of up to 18 police officers patrolling trains per shift. It's worth trying. Barrera hasn't noticed the heightened visibility. If they have, I haven't really seen them. I think the only ones that I saw briefly was when I took BART at like 7 in the morning. There's an officer at the entrance to um, tag on. However, the agency says the added visibility is making a difference. BART's police chief says the larger police presence has led to more arrests. March and April saw the highest monthly arrest total since the beginning of the pandemic. But like many law enforcement agencies around the Bay Area, BART police is dealing with a staffing shortage. We do currently have 31 police officer vacancies. Franklin says they're working with other law enforcement agencies to make BART the stations and surrounding neighborhoods safer. And safety is a major concern concern among BART riders. A recent Bay Area Council poll revealed 46% of respondents said they'd witnessed a crime firsthand while riding BART. Though Barrera doesn't have hesitation riding BART, she still takes some safety precautions. So I don't work on BART, um, mostly because even though it's not a scary place to be in, I still don't feel safe bringing out my laptop and, you know, having someone just run by and snatch it. Her experience has been positive over the last year or so, but she understands others may not be in the same boat. Other people may not feel safe on different lines. You know, again, that's their commute, their, their way of getting home may be different than mine. As she gets another trip on the yellow line under her belt, she's glad to see BART police are trying to do something to change both perception and reality. 
All right, now to the fate of the fixed seating inside of San Francisco's historic Castro Theater. The Board of Supervisors have voted to not designate the seats as a landmark. So the decision removes wording to add the seats as landmark status. It now paves the way for the theater's operators to make renovations. Another Planet Entertainment wants to remove the orchestra seats and add removable ones to host live events.